Hey guys, Peter Murphy Lewis again. I'm the host of LTC Heroes. And last video, I shared with you my motivations for why I signed up to become a CNA, a certified nurse's aide. Today, I wanna show you what that training looks like. Please join me in this video and tell me what you think afterwards in the comments below. To be a CNA in Kansas, the first thing that I realized is I had to do 45 hours of didactic work and then 21 hours of skills, which means in-person skills with the teacher at Allied Health, and then 24 hours of clinicals where I will be going into a nursing home and shadowing another CNA. So 45 hours is what I'm going to show you that I have been working on. This week, I started studying for my CNA training. The first thing that I went through after signing up online was just to understand the importance of CNAs. I would say the first thing that I was most nervous about was how hard the test would be. I'm 41, and my guess is that the average age of CNAs is probably 25 years old. Uh, I'm a little bit far removed from studying and taking any type of exam in high school or college. So a little bit intimidating, think that I was going to be embarrassed by it. The first thing that I jumped into were introduction videos about the team and the instructor. And uh, I was excited to get to know Michelle and Diane. And these were kind of common faces of people that I started to see who explained the concepts of being a CNA and the importance of their role, the percentage of the workforce that are CNAs. And they just do a really easy step-by-step -step explanation of why we're here and what we're gonna be going through. And as I started to go through the work, you know, the very first test that I do is a reading and I'm pretty dyslexic. Uh, I write down words um, in different syllables. I get my numbers written down the wrong way all the time on the phone. So the very first test is a reading comprehension. And I was really, really intimidated. The test was hard for me because I had to go and look at a question and go back and read. Go look at a question, go back and read. So for example, this one, the purpose of OBRA, this was pretty easy to me because I knew that we were talking about life care of residents in long-term care. And I know that my job as a CNA is to improve the life of care. Not having any type of clinical background, I was a little bit worried about, you know, big words. Some of the materials that I get into are words like hemiparesis or hemiplasia. I didn't know what those are. So, I mean, I'm, I'm specifically highlighting ones that I'm struggling in. Like I didn't know almost 50% of these words right here. And on the other side, the same. So I do a lot of writing down things that I get in the printed format. So there is a fair amount of technical language, but the teachers do a really good job of making you prepared for it, comfortable for it. One of the great things about studying to be a CNA, and I, I sense that this is not just at Allied uh, Health Career Training. I would guess that this would be for any CNA process in the US, I can send emails. So there's a teacher who immediately reached out to me right away. For example, I took a test and I sent in an error that I couldn't see something. I couldn't see to see a book. And she said that she was taking care of the IT person and they got it resolved. There was a test that I took. For example, this is which are the common stereotypes of aging? And I put elderly or rich. I thought that would be a negative stereotype. They all live in nursing homes. They're all bingo players. They're all 65 and they're all lonely. Looks like I clicked all of them um, and two of these were wrong. I sent her a message. I specifically said, I thought that that would be negative. And she goes, I agree with you. They recently updated the, the course. Um, I will have them changed. So the teachers are really, really helpful. One of the classes that I've appreciated the most so far as something that I specifically posted on LinkedIn. And I think I did this test on Saturday at about like five or six o'clock in the morning. And it was about a very, very well-known woman um, who's been training in long-term care named Tep Tepa or Tipa Snow. And she does amazing class about 
people with dementia. What we're going to be doing this afternoon is working with each other because in order to do dementia care, you don't do it solo. You do it with somebody. My goal before you walk out of here is you'll have some new ways of looking at what's going on. And because you have new ways of looking at what's going on, you'll also have a new appreciation for why what happens happens. And so once you know that, then you can back up and decide to change something. Because when you're working with somebody with dementia, you're the one who has to decide to change something. Back to what was surprising to me about this, I thought how you talk to someone with dementia would be common sense, especially being the grandson of people with Alzheimer's and dementia. I thought that I would be able to do that test on my own without watching that video. That's not true. I learned probably 25 different things from um, Tip of Snow and it really, really impacted kind of the way that I knew that I would be addressing people with dementia. In my next video, I'm going to show you about my in-person skills training. Right down here. Click this one. Watch the next one. Tell me what you think. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.